Hello, uh, you are watching Uncranian.com and my name is Anton. And I'm Talik and right now we're in a Sheffield. And uh, here is the first ever English kitchen cast for Uncranian. Right. Yeah. Uh, today we are talking with uh, Adam from Sheffield, uh, the, or the organizer of uh, the Bombet Charity Hitchhike. Uh, hey Adam. Yeah, hey Adam, and we'll drink a very nice gold premium lager, so if you will be able to be in England, just try this beer, it's good. It is pretty good. So, uh, why don't you tell us first, just uh, in a few words, uh, what Bombet is? Um, Bombet is a event, or two events actually at the moment, and hopefully three in the future, uh -huh. um, where we have decided to raise money by hitchhiking across Europe. Um, this was an initiative started ten years ago now by um, a university organisation called... University of Sheffield. Yeah, but no, by, by a society in the uni itself, so it's run by the, the students of mm -hmm. the university. But volunteer, so, volunteering yeah, students. Yeah, it's, it's called raising and giving. So the idea is yeah, you, the, the rag. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and that was what happened ten years ago. Uh -huh. Now, um, Bummet has actually started to raise more money than than the raising and giving charity itself, just through the two wow. events that we do. So, everything that they do equates to say a hundred thousand pounds, and the the two events last year that we did um, raised one hundred sixteen thousand. Um, so basically the idea started out as let's take a trip down to the, the south of England and hitchhike, make it a challenge and uh -huh. therefore you can get sponsorship from family, friends and by standing on the street and, and shaking a bucket just to, uh -huh. to raise money for charity. And wow. you, know, you know how um, if, you, if you're in a marathon say you'd be able to get sponsorship yeah. because of the, the, or, challenge, the challenge of it is... Or you swim across or you, something or yeah, you just, exactly. just like that. Mm -hmm. Instead make it a hitchhike and yeah. that's something that Loads, loads of young people want to do because, like you guys, so, so you've, you've, out of this you've got a, a massive trip across Europe and you've been able to see a lot of it and speak to a lot of different people. That attracts more people to the idea, which then raises more money. Mm -hmm. So here in the UK, uh, young people like us, it would be interesting for them to pitch somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's well. I, I did it first time just on a whim basically because I, I knew that I liked traveling conventionally. So where did you go? Um, in the first hitchhike or yes. beforehand. Well, first time. The first time I went traveling, I went interrailing across Europe and it was it was great. I, I met people. Yeah. Um, on on trains. So, on trains, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that got me into the whole idea of traveling. And so yes, as so soon as I came to university, mm -hmm. And I found out that there was a hitchhiking organisation, and I knew that I'd like travelling, and I knew that you know, I wanted to raise money for some good causes. It's mm -hmm. just the, the obvious way. So it's fun, and it's yeah. also a charity. Exactly. Okay, so uh, the first time you did hitchhike, yeah. So uh, did you have someone else with you who was more experienced? A partner. No. Or both of you was absolutely new in that. The, those those three of us. Um, so a team was three people. Yeah. You, oh, you, can, go, you can go into. Or uh -huh. three. Um, so we have to get a lift for all three people, yeah. uh, which is really slow. Uh, it, it was quite slow, but it wasn't. It, wasn't well, so it was alright. It, it did actually help that um, I was with two girls. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> so you and two and girls. <laughs> me and me and two girls made it. Uh, and not a lot of luggage. Uh, not not, uh -huh. not obscene amount. No, no. So it is slower. Like you can't you can't get in lorries and things like that. But, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So it's a bit slower. But okay, and. Um, do someone of you was did someone of you was more experienced? Did someone hitchhike or no? Not before, just first no. time. It's the first so time. yeah, when people go on the first time hitchhike, they would probably go go for it in the framework of this charity hitchhike. When you know somebody's organizing it, right? Exactly. And uh, bomb it as a organizer, you give some uh, info, right? Some handbook or something. Yeah, I, think or, I can get an example of that handbook in a minute, uh -huh. if you'd like to see it. Okay, oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. And some basic tips, and then... Uh, yeah, quite in-depth tips, actually, in, in places, especially mm -hmm. because you know kind of the route of where you, you're going, and right. you can, if, if you're you know, going to stick by that route, then mm -hmm. you're more in likely... In particular countries. Yeah, and then the, the handbook is set out to kind of follow those routes, but we'll obviously... Mm -hmm. So it's also geographically specific? Like, well, yes. Yeah. So uh, you don't really suppose to go 
by other ways to reach well, your point. I think it's up to people. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it is. You can go any any way you like, but it's mm -hmm. just that some countries will have more info than others. If you like this this year, for example, it our, was our, our halfway yeah, it is yeah. Lithuania, but our halfway was Prague, and yep. you, you could go any way you wanted. Yeah. But in this handbook, there was specific advice for areas of road which you are more likely to have to travel on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the example in this country would be, you know, the M1 going south. Yeah. These service stations are here. You need to get around London, so you go on the M25. Huh. Here's the service station you need to go off at, at the M1. Huh. So it's possible for you to. You know, so it's to already quite a lot of instruction. Yeah, it's but then like... plenty, plenty of people choose to go via London anyway. So yeah. me and my team uh -huh. to go south just decided to go into the centre of London just to have a look around. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as you can, you know, got a map, you can, you can figure uh, it out. So yeah. is it is it a competition of who reaches the destination first? Not. Not really. Not, not entirely. Reach yeah. The destination. <laughs> Everyone always reaches the destinations, uh -huh. which, is, which is great. Uh, uh, with both of girls or some of the, them you leave on the way. <laughs> <laughs> with, with other girls than you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so you one. change the girls in the way like a few times, yeah. yeah. I don't think I'd be forgiven by the girls that I started with. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, now everyone always tends to meet the meet the destination. Mm -hmm. the destination but is it a competition? Not really. It's no. just a. That is. The, it's a big team. There is there is a team, right? And how many teams do you guys have on the usual moment event? So in the big event in Europe, there's two trips of two hundred, which is then split up into wow. two or three wow. in, in mm -hmm. each team. So that is so many that you even have to do it two, exactly. you know, two shifts. Yeah. Like that, so. It doesn't. It isn't completely set out every year, but mm -hmm. there's the capacity for two sets of two hundred. So last year there was three hundred and sixty overall. Yeah. Okay. Three okay. Three it, is, it is a lot. Like, yeah. It's, it's a lot. lot. It's, a, it's a lot. And, and the, the, the roads don't get I don't know clogged. But they, so they definitely do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> so we 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 all wear these. Um, these coloured hoodies just to differentiate <laughs> ourselves from hitchhikers that might look a bit more dodgy. Uh -huh. So there is. So if you if you like this year was a red hoodie, last year was a green. So there's two hundred people going down mm -hmm. one one direction, and so. And there is kind of a bonnet logo on them. There is, yeah. If, uh -huh. if I, again, I can I can show you the example. Okay. Um, it just makes it easier for people to see that sure. it's a set organisation. That this is an action. It's an actual yeah. thing, and uh -huh. you're helping out something you know which is raising money for charity rather oh. than just picking up some random people that are trying yeah. to go somewhere which is fine yeah. you, you'll get picked up eventually but it just makes it especially yeah. in this country more official so oh so uh, people really know about them in uk not as much as i'd like them to <laughs> but yeah it's, it's starting to get more well known and yeah. just the uh, concept of a charity hitchhike yeah and the, the concept of it is is quite widespread mm -hmm. it, the, the thing that made Bummer different was because it was run by students and um, there, there are other companies that, that do hitchhikes mm -hmm. and you have to pay for them and, and they're organised by a, a business and less mm -hmm. of the money goes to charity that sort of thing. So is this uh, organisational <coughs> stuff like a hoodie, right? So you yeah. have to print it, right? And then a handbook or something yeah. that is provided to teams for a small fee. Uh, how, the, how does the money work? Okay, so um, for the, the big trip, which is the one you're probably most interested in. Oh, there's mm -hmm. um, a ticket price of sixty-five pounds. Mm -hmm. So you pay that, and you're in the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you, but you have to also raise. Um, I think this year it was two hundred and forty pounds. And that's which, a separate thing. Yeah, that goes towards the charity. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the sixty-five. Um, goes towards tickets for the nights out, which mm -hmm. are halfway and mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, hostels at those locations as well. So hostels are taken care of? Yeah, only for the, the halfway and at the end. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. between those times, okay. do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, and also a meal at halfway, a meal at the end. Mm -hmm. What about the connection? I don't know. Uh, when people travel, they have to update where they are, right? Mm -hmm. There is such thing as a tracker. Yes, that's right. Yeah. How, so how, that, how does that work? <laughs> the technicalities go over my head, but luckily we, that's why we have a committee to sort of mm -hmm. delegate these things out. Right. So there's a, there's a web um, guy who will sort it out. Uh -huh. So how many people work to make Bombit happen? Uh, how much? Uh, On the committee there are 16 people that do different things. So mm -hmm. I'm the chair of the next committee and so we organise in 
level one who's so doing fair. different bits. So like the hood is need a designer, uh -huh. but uh -huh. also needs to be um, ethically re resourced. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's, it's a big part of the union to be environmentally mm -hmm. friendly. So there's an environment officer, and there's a charities officer who will receive mm -hmm. applications from local charities. Like a liaison between charities yeah, exactly. and the event. Um, it's, a, it's a link that we're, we're quite proud of because of of the charity the charity has been quite yeah. local and also because um, we, we have a charities officer that can liaise with them. It means we can form a close bond and also see where the money's going and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a position for you know, every every, mm -hmm. every section of the, the, the running of the charity that Wow. That needs one. Yeah, so it it seems it's very very organized thing. It's taken it's taken ten years to become that organized. Yeah, but yeah. still. So it start it so how, like how how did it start? Like, you yeah. know, first ever ten years ago, do you know the story? I don't particularly know, other than the right. fact that the the raising and giving um yeah. group of people decided there's a there's a a, a fundraising event that they try out because it was just it was an idea that and just sort of started, say, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and decided to do it off their own backs to try and get organised. But they did, it, they did it on mm -hmm. top of other stuff as well, and it was a smaller thing, and they decided to call it Bum It because it would be bumming around and, uh -huh. uh, and raising money at the same time. But okay. I, don't, I don't know the specifics of the story. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, uh, every year you have, like, a new handbook, yes? Mm -hmm. And uh, who are the people who create all that tips? How they check the tips is works or yeah, of course how they from how they here, combine yeah. uh, all that road, you know? Okay, so um, mainly it is done by one of the publicity teams. So last year I was a publicity mm -hmm. officer and mm -hmm. was trying to advertise around. Just the, another responsibility yeah. within the budget yeah, team. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just another role. But there's also another publicity officer who is responsible for writing the, the handbook and. Um, writing passages for the, the local newspaper or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it is mainly organised by the publicity officer who was called Scott last year. Um, and he checked that every bit of the handbook was correct or was mm -hmm. supposed to. <laughs> there, was, there, there was often a couple of mistakes. So he, 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 he tried that way? He, he, no, he didn't. Um, well, you, can, you, can, you can check the route by looking on sort of. Um, Hitchwicky, have you yeah, Google Maps? Yeah, and, oh. and just checking that the, the routes make sense uh -huh. and, and going online and finding out. Okay. Also, checking just with in, the years before. In theory. So, mm -hmm. when, you, when, you've, when we've got you know, the, the past few years' experience, we find out whether there's a problem with one place and you can update the handbook. Because often we've gone in a similar direction, we've always yeah, gone. But, but you're going in different direction, different location and you yeah, every year. There, there, yeah. are, there are similarities, but then mm -hmm. the differences can be checked. Online, of course. And that's that's so really the only way you can do you it. You already know the destination for Bummit 2014. No, not yet. Not yet. It's still too it's a secret. It's, so. it's not even been decided. It's not even okay. yeah. So it's still yeah. secret. Yeah. yeah. So when the people travel and they set out, is there a rule of uh, paying no money uh, on the you know to get places, or w what are the formal rules? There aren't any particular formal rules. That so it's just to get there whichever way you want. Yeah, and the idea is obviously you spend no money, otherwise it wouldn't be a hitchhike. But we couldn't really say, like, don't spend any money. Yeah, like 0.0. Zero point zero. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it would just... Don't yeah. eat any food, please. Exactly. So, yeah, just, um, yeah, and the expenses like food and uh, whatever you need on the road, that is personal expense. Yeah, yeah. it has to be. It's, mm -hmm. it'd be so if people want to couch surf, it's their problem to find yeah. the food. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is quite, it's quite easy to do on a smaller scale than, say, 300 people. So there's often, we get often get asked a lot of questions about of what, what people can do and stuff, especially if they're less experienced at traveling or especially hitchhiking. Because uh -huh. um, a lot of people just do it mm -hmm. because they know it's an organized thing, but have never thought about doing it before. So sometimes some people can need a bit more help than others. Any any accidents? I don't know, any people being not happy or... There's, but there's always plenty of people that aren't very happy. Among the participants? Yeah, yeah, so the people can get stuck so, in places. So they don't really know what they're signing up for? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it does happen. And then they blame you. So if you, if you guys were thinking of setting up a, a charity hitchhike, expect uh -huh. some complaints. Yeah, and then they blame you. Yeah. For, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but... Um, but then it gets easily solved when so we have like a system of like a safety phone 
and mm -hmm. emergency so whatever fund. happens so, they, yeah. yeah which is there is always, a always managed yeah. by mm -hmm. someone on the committee of and then there's always somebody at the university who we have a staff member actually now that looks after the raising and giving section of mm -hmm. so, um, of, of the union and she's always on hand to deal with emergencies and things like that which has only been the case in the last few years when the hitchhike got bigger okay. the university wasn't prepared to just let the students do it completely on their own because it could go wrong potentially mm -hmm. but there's always there's always someone that um, is on this phone that could help mm -hmm. someone else that gets stuck so is there is support there is support yeah mm -hmm. but, but mainly um, accidents that have happened like people getting stuck in, in yeah, the middle just of Polish forest, which is something that happened this year, uh -huh, in yeah. ridiculous temperatures, they've figured out a way to you know get out of that or keep warm until they can. So it usually takes uh, takes place in spring, or it varies. Yeah, yeah it's spring, March or April. How they how they get to the that middle of the Polish? They just got forest. left there. What? Uh -huh. They just got left there. I don't think they they left. Well. And uh, how do people, okay, so people hitched to Vilnius, yeah, for example, how do people get back to wherever they live? They, they can get back however they, they choose, but most people fly back. Mm -hmm. So usually it is that you hitch somewhere and fly back home? Yeah, but um, a lot of people do further travelling, so... Uh -huh. Just go somewhere else? Going and further the... north to, to Latvia mm -hmm. and people coming to Finland. And yeah, and, uh, it's kind of as... As long as you're there, you want to see something else, yeah, which exactly. is around. But yeah. the, the official trip, and therefore mm -hmm. our responsibilities for participants, right, right, stops right. at midnight on the, the last day. Sure. So mm -hmm. anyone can... You can what, was it on Bamet at some point that people got free flights to some places? Yeah, the, yeah, that has happened before. Um, so, uh, <laughs> could you tell us about that? Um, it, was, it was actually a friend of mine called um, Ian, and he was in an airport with him, himself and his team obviously, um, in Brussels I think it was, and he felt particularly confident after a couple of beers and decided to, to ask around. To go for it. Yeah. To, just to see what happened. Um, and I think that he found someone who knew someone who owned a private jet or something, so it wasn't done officially. Through, ah, through so a it wasn't an airline? No. Uh, when, it, when that has happened, and I don't think it's happened on Bummit, not at least recently, they have to write to the company like weeks beforehand. So it's not uh -huh. really it's not really hitchhiking. Yeah. But this this guy Ian It's uh, not there on the spot. No, it? no. Exactly. Okay, but Ian? Yeah. He he just asked around and said, Yeah, I'm going to Budapest uh -huh. <laughs> on this private jet. So he got a, a free flight from, from Brussels to Budapest. Just him. Why him was, him was team. Uh -huh. Whoever was in his team. How many people? I think it might have been three. Yeah. So five cool. and three of them. Yeah, so <laughs> Unfortunately, that meant he missed the halfway point where everyone was meeting up. To, oh, yeah, to but then he was but, already there. But he had a free flight, so... <laughs> yeah, I think the free flight was much more interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what did Okay, so this was Adam and the Barmet Charity Hedge Hike here in the University of Sheffield. And, and then there was Uncranian.com with you. Uh, and uh, I want to say but in Ukrainian, of course. Uh, sponsor нашого проекту магазин туристичного спорядження Гаргани, який дав нам такі прекрасні рюкзачки, які досі таскають наші речі за собою. І також проект Ontrainian.com це благодійна акція, яку ви можете підтримати, зробивши пожертвування на сторінці Just Given. Це були Антон, Толік і привіт із Шефілда та Великобританії.